This is Strictly Business, presented by the Greater Bakersfield Chamber of Commerce. Sponsored in part by the Law Offices of Young Wooldridge, San Joaquin Community Hospital. Good morning, and thank you for joining us. My name is Nick Ortiz. I'm the CEO of the Greater Bakersfield Chamber of Commerce, and we're here with Strictly Business. Um, Strictly Business is a partnership between uh, the Greater Bakersfield Chamber and the Bakersfield Californian, and um, we are very glad to be sponsored, as you saw in the the run-through up right up front, by a young Woldridge LLP and San Joaquin Hospital. They make this show possible, and we thank them for their sponsorship. Um, today, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We are um, not going to be doing a show per se, but more of an educational uh, webinar. So we're going to use our time today to talk about social media, to talk about what's going on in the sphere of social media and how you can really use it to um, boost your business, um, to use it, to use advertising. We've had programs before at the Chamber where we've talked about social media and the various platforms platforms, but I think we're going to delve a little bit deeper today. So um, I'm really pleased today to be joined by my colleague, Hillary Haynes, from the Chamber, our project manager. Good morning. Good morning, Nick. And we've got Jamie Buto, who is our expert, social media expert. Hello. She's got a long history of being a print journalist (laughs) at newspapers in the San Joaquin Valley, social media consultant, and teaches at the Levin Center at Bakersfield College. Yep, yep, two classes up there starting next month. Wow. Um, so we've got Social Media 101 and Social Media Marketing Okay. up there. No, that's great, that's great, because I know there's a lot of people who are interested in it. Like I said, we've done some programs before where we've kind of focused on, you know, what are the various platforms, how do you use them, but I think the, the next step is really, you know, what is what can you do to market your business on social media? We had uh, Facebook, um, we hosted co-hosted Facebook down here uh, earlier this year. Earlier this year, and um, they did their small business boost program, mm-hmm. and they talked about you know the advertising that's available on Facebook. And I think I was just astounded by the ability to target, micro-target in some senses, and and the cost effectiveness mm-hmm. of some of those advertisements. Facebook has really developed their platform over the past year and a half. We've seen a lot of growth, a lot of changes, continued growth as well mm-hmm. coming from them. I read an article, I believe it was in Wired Magazine, it was about a year ago, where somebody played a practical joke on his roommate by targeting only him in Facebook ads. <laughs> he was able to target that narrowly so only his roommate saw those ads on Facebook. And it was, of course, a practical joke. But that is the capability that's out there. So yeah. when you're talking about defining your audience and mm-hmm. targeting your audience, it's there. Yeah. And Facebook has the platform to do it on right now. Yeah, so we have, um, you know, we've kind of... I don't know, dabbled with Facebook advertising, Hillary, a little bit. A little bit, bit. yeah, with promoting our our events that we have. And I'm excited to learn from you today. And I know our, our committee and our members are as well. You know, um, we've done, yeah, we've boosted posts on Mm -hmm. Facebook and Twitter, but that's the extent of, you know, our, you know, expertise in it. We're we're working with a consultant now where we're actually trying to target specific folks. And, you know, it's a little creepy, but um, (laughs) you can actually, I learned from from our marketing consultant, you can actually put a, you know, a list of folks that you want to target specifically, as you noted, and, you know, run certain types of advertisements. So we've been running some advertisements on Facebook um, about the chamber, um, kind of targeting folks who, who may have been members in the past but are no longer members, folks who are targets for members, and then just a general ad for our, our members who already, you know, participate. So we've yeah. tr- kind of tried to, to do, you know, a little bit of micro-targeting of the ad content, but that's about as deep as we've gone. And, you know, it seems like it's been, it's been good for us, but I think if you had, you know, if you were a small business, if you had a limited marketing budget, mm-hmm. then you could really make some headway with this. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. There's a lot to, a lot of capabilities out there, and it's not just boosting posts. It's creating the the ads. There's two different things that we'll talk about today: the boosted posts and what they call promoted posts, and those mm-hmm. are ads. Yeah. So, and you know, I, I think for 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 Facebook, but I'm not sure with other platforms, you can really actually. You know, kind of, if you don't have folks to to micro target to, you can almost set up some, um, I don't know, some some boundaries or oh, some yeah. categories mm-hmm. of folks that you're you're looking to target, or you know, you have a group of people and you want you know folks who are like them on Facebook that yes. you want to target to. 
Yeah, the company that I work full time for is this is what we do all day is we set up ad campaigns to help small businesses. Mm -hmm. And one of the biggest platforms we use is Facebook advertising. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm working with a couple of businesses in North Carolina, and they're really targeting military families around mm -hmm. Fort Bragg. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're able to specifically geo target those families living on base for specific ads. Wow. And then the greater community where for the families that are living off base to get specific ads on Facebook. Book. Interesting. Yeah. See what we can do? I know. <laughs> <laughs> you could target certain neighborhoods. I mean, I this is a huge, where we really see growth in Facebook and in you know, <laughs> elections are coming up yeah, if, you exactly. haven't, if you haven't noticed. Uh, <laughs> so we're really going to see the political advertising because they yes. can target that. They don't have to, to blanket the whole county. Yeah. They can target the district of the voters in their district with their message. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, I, I think almost, I mean, w we have done some direct mail and mm -hmm. some zip code targeted uh, mailings. But I think almost that, you know, going with the Facebook or the social media style mm -hmm. Targeting is, it, you know, can be a little bit more direct, a little bit, you know, more cost effective for sure, yeah. because not just postage, but printing right. and, you know, getting that, that targeted database can be tough. But I mean, it really seems to be the substitute for direct mail. And, and you know, what's your perspective on that? Is it, is it more powerful? Is, is there more of a return um, for, you know, social media, that type of, you know, very micro targeted ad versus, you know, direct mailing? The question that you have to ask yourself is where is your audience? Mm -hmm. Where do you want them to be? And that's that's the biggest thing with social media is you'll you'll hear from small businesses, well, why do I want to advertise here? I'm not on Facebook. I why would I want to advertise mm -hmm. there? because your audience is there, because yeah, your potential right. customers are there. Mm -hmm. So there are different platforms available, and we can definitely, we'll talk a little bit about that, Facebook versus Google AdWords, for instance. Yeah. Um, where is your audience? What are they doing? What do you need to do to make them aware of your business and your products and services? So mm -hmm. it really is focusing on, you've really got to narrow down your, your objectives, your goals, where your audience is, and it might be a $75 a month Facebook campaign. It mm -hmm. might be a $100 a month Twitter campaign. Mm -hmm. Really, it's isolating those factors down and, and figuring out what you want and then how do we get it. And, you know, a lot of it is almost how you develop the content for your advertising. Mm -hmm. I mean, on Facebook, it can appear to be more like a display ad. Oh, yeah. Where, yeah. you know, and sometimes you can do it a little bit differently. But, you know, when you see a promoted tweet within your Twitter feed, um, you know, you really can mistake it almost for, right. you know, mm -hmm. content that somebody that you know has delivered. And I don't want to say mistake because that almost means, you know, somebody's <laughs> trying to, to, to pull some type of subterfuge. Yeah. But it really does, you know, show up in your feed. And you, you, you have a tendency when you're going through it to, to read it fully. Yeah. Whereas if it were a display advertisement, you may just pass it by. I was on Twitter. Um, I was, like, following along with Twitter during big nights like the Oscars and then the Emmys yeah. this past yeah. weekend. And there were tweets from Coca-Cola, and I'm like, I don't follow co oh promoted tw okay yeah yes they pay you know large companies <laughs> pay big money yeah. to blanket cons you know nationwide consumers but for the small business you don't have to spend that much money mm -hmm. um to be able to get results in your local market interesting so. so beyond you know like the platforms of facebook and twitter um you know i know we're going to talk and delve down into both of those during your presentation um and in the next segment but you know, what is next in your opinion? Like where, where is it, where are things going? Where, how are people going to push out content? I think we're going to see continued growth in these two platforms. I think Google AdWords is going to continue to grow. Mm -hmm. um, I think search engine marketing, search engine marketing is huge. I was just getting ready to push something out to our, that'll go out to our clients through my, through True Measure, through my company, um, about holidays. And, you mm. know, 70, more than 70% of consumers search for products online to do research before they set foot yeah. in the store. Mm -hmm. So is your or business Or if you're like there? me, you know, Amazon Prime. <laughs> yeah. you know. But you're still <laughs> researching. You're still starting with Google to research. What do I want to buy? Yes. You know, that kind of thing. But then again, yeah, you do have the reviews on Amazon and yeah. Yelp and things like that. Um, so we got to get your get companies out there where they're going. Um, we're going to see more growth in Facebook. I expect to see exponential growth in Twitter and cost reductions coming in Twitter as well. Yeah. They just earlier this year um, updated their platform for small business owners to start buying ads and they've made it very cost effective. Again, micro targeting, micro geo target so you can be very specific that you only want your ads to show for 
male Twitter users in Bakersfield, mm -hmm. uh, you know, or people of a certain age group in Kern County. Mm -hmm. So I think we're going to see more development there. One of the biggest things, and I have this in my presentation, is why do you want to be on Facebook? Because their developers are continuing to build those platforms yeah. nonstop. Yeah. It, we've seen consistent growth there. And, you know, you mentioned, you know, the elections. I mean, I, mean, I, I don't know if there's been a real sea change, but, you know, from your perspective as somebody who's doing this on a daily basis, between 2012, which, you know, social media, well, 2008 even, mm -hmm. 2010, 2012, 2014, all big social media campaigns. But between the last yeah. presidential election and this presidential election, I'm sure that, you know, the capabilities, the targeting ability, and the presence of political folks on uh, social media has definitely grown. And that, I mean, it's long been said that Obama won his election and re-election based on his social media campaigns. You look at the my Obama, mybarackobama.com, the site that they put out, yeah. and the social functions that were built into that site for fundraising, it was... Um, I'm involved in a Jamberry Nails party right now. And it was, you know, you share that with your friends on social media. Barack Obama and his, his social media team made it possible, hey, I donated $10 to this campaign. Won't you join me in fundraising? Yeah. And people who only donated $5, $10, $20, $20, they felt like they were a part of something mm -hmm. through that social media experience. Yeah. So One of the things I think that I've noticed is, you know, like you look at just the last two, three weeks of the Republican in, you know, nomination process. You look at, you know, Donald Trump makes an offhand comment about Carly Fiorina. She, yep. she, she does an ad around it. Mm -hmm. She buys no airtime, but she pushes it out through social media. Yep. And it's on Huffington Post. It's on Drudge. It's on all of the top sites. But it's also, you know, kind of percolating out there through the social media platforms. And it's not just it's not just as alternative websites. It's on it's on the Today Show. It's on yeah. NBC Nightly News. They're talking yeah. about you know Trump tweeted this, Fiorina tweeted that. Yeah. Somebody you know, and it's. This is what's making news now. Yeah. So it's definitely interesting. So, I mean, I, I, you know, do you even, I mean, if you, if you have a certain type of, you know, business or if you're a certain type of, you know, in a certain type of industry, politics is, you know, definitely an industry in addition to, you know, being oh, yeah. a governance <laughs> process. Um, but, I mean, does it even make sense anymore for, you know, to do ad buys to? Oh, yeah. Okay. No, it definitely does. Part of, it definitely does for certain businesses. Um Again, it's looking at where your audience is. Yeah. If your audience is as, as a certain demographic that watches, you know, local TV or cable TV, mm -hmm. reads the daily newspaper, then remember that physical newspaper we, you know, still yes. see randomly around town? Yes. Um, I think it's made somewhere. <laughs> yeah. You know, somebody in here somewhere has something nearby. to do with that. With that yeah. <laughs> My neighbor gets the physical one delivered <laughs> still, so I, I do see it on their driveway. Um, you know, but if that's your audience that's where you need to be. Yeah. And you, but you need to track that. And that's actually something that my company does. We have technology, we call tracking numbers. Uh, we do website proxies to, mm -hmm. to really show where the tracking is coming from, from those different campaigns. Mm -hmm. And we're working with business owners all over the place to say, hey, you need to shift more dollars here. Mm -hmm. We've got a couple of campaigns that are running that are just getting stellar numbers out of print, print yeah. advertising. You know. Again, targeting their audience. Wow. It's, it's working for them. And if you're using these other platforms, tr trying to reinforce or, you know, micro tar target on top of your broader, you mm -hmm. know, kind of airwave or, you know, newspaper print advertising campaign, you can kind of reinforce some of the messages that you've... Uh, and you're exactly right. It's not just buying ads on social media, though. You've got to be engaged there. And mm -hmm. that's that's especially important in uh, with Twitter. You've yes. got, you can't just buy ads on Twitter and expect to get results. You've got to be an influencer. You've got to be engaged on the platform as well. Yeah. And that's so. been, I mean, that's been a learning experience for me. Um, Jamie, you're friends with my wife on Facebook. <laughs> um, you probably have, you know, had no idea that, uh, you know, I finally joined Facebook in April. I did notice that. <laughs> it's about time. Oh, okay. I know. It's about time, Nick. <laughs> and so, you know, it was, you know, I, I kind of resisted for a really long time. But, I mean, that is where so much of the conversation happens, yeah. especially in our industry. Mm -hmm. And I do have a Twitter account. I try to be active with it. But, you know, I find myself saying, I, you know, it's almost like a mantra. I got to be better about tweeting. I got to yeah. start tweeting mm -hmm. more. Um, not just to be annoying or put, you know, um, 
you know, my thoughts out there. But really, because it's interesting, I use, you know, and, we were, and Lewis and I were talking about this just on the last show, Lewis Amistoy, you know, I use Twitter for business. I use Twitter to mm-hmm. talk about, here's what we're doing right. at the chamber. Here's right. where we are today. And I use, you know, Facebook more for the, you know, here's the crazy things my kids said. Or That's, you are, <laughs> no, that is exactly, that's the same exact way I use it too. Yeah. I will get folks from, that I, you know, from work that are trying to friend me on Facebook. And I'm like, oh, sorry, yeah. I keep my Facebook personal, but I do use Twitter and LinkedIn yeah. mm-hmm. for, hey, here's this great thing. I'm working on my master's in media psychology. So it's like, oh, look at this great article I wrote on, yeah. on the science of happiness and how it affects our social media behaviors. Yeah. Um, so I, you know, that stuff, I tweet out any kind of social media news, mm-hmm. e-marketing, mm-hmm. digital marketing news, that's Twitter and LinkedIn for me. Yeah. I think if I put that on Facebook, I'd have friends jumping ship left and right. Like, oh, what is she <laughs> talking about? Again, no there she goes. There that. she goes, geeking out again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, one of the things that I've actually, um, one of our colleagues, got me hooked on, you know, podcasts, which oh, is yeah. really an interesting and unique way to welcome kind of, to 2013. I know. <laughs> Have you listened to Serial yet? Yes. Oh, good. <laughs> and now I'm obsessed with all of the Serial, like, spinoffs. Yeah. You know, like, I'm, I have, like, five Serial spinoffs that I have to follow. Yeah, I know. If, wa- if you haven't listened to Serial, I'm sure, you know, as a journalist, you're probably very uh, interested in that. I want more. That, yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> they will not say when that podcast comes back. Yeah. But, no, I, what I've noticed is, I mean, even in the chamber world, mm-hmm. we have folks who are doing very specific podcasts on, like, membership. How do you build value into your programs? How do you yeah. maximize? you know, kind of revenue per member, you know, and it's, you know, 15 minutes and, you know, it's very easy to just kind of throw out there and you kind of not only are throwing out content, but you're also, you know, becoming almost a knowledge leader on some of these issues. And most of them probably have a hashtag yes. associated with them. Yes. Yeah. There's something, a stat I read recently that again, in the Super Bowl earlier this year, more than 65% of the ads had hashtags on them. Oh, wow. wow. Because they want That's you to impressive. go online and see the rest of the story. Yeah. Yeah, and it's always, yeah, there always is some, you know, do this after, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. seeing the, the ad, the crazy ad. We don't passively watch TV anymore. We yeah. engage with mm-hmm. it. Yeah. So you go online and you talk about uh, the TV show, the season finale, the series mm-hmm. finale, things like that. Yeah. So. Well, and I, I think there's even been, you know, if you have a smart TV um, – we saw this during the, the the Super Bowl as well, where you could you know just scroll down and it would take you to whatever page they wanted you to go see. Yeah. And you know, again, the, a little creepy, a little you know, Big Brother ish, but I mean, definitely expands the reach of yeah. you know traditional advertising campaigns. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, so um, yeah, I'm I'm, on, I'm doing podcasts. I'm on Facebook now. I'm continuing to tweet. So I'm trying to be better, a better social. I said, you know, a year ago, if you asked me, I would say I was a social media dinosaur. But you know, I'm really, I'm really trying to do a better job of you know engaging with these platforms, especially because they're important to our membership, mm-hmm. right, Hillary? They're important to our they membership are. at the chamber. It's a lot of the way that, you know, uh, our members connect with us or follow what we're doing very quickly or see, hey, where to go? You know, exactly. there's a, there's an event, there's a mixer, you know, immediately, you know, people are looking to see, you know, where it is. Who's and, attending. Yeah. And if, yeah if, yeah, if it's worth their while because, you exactly. know, who's there, who's checked in, who's tagged in, in a picture, you know. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> Well, um, we're going to break in just a minute, but um, we will use the next segment to have Jamie go through a presentation um, where she'll talk about, you know, some very specific, show some screenshots, you know, take you through how to do the advertising. Um, and um, in our advertising on our um, website and our, our social media, we encourage you, if you have questions, comments, feedback, um, to um, either post them to the Chamber's Facebook page or tweet um, to the Chamber or myself. Um, it's at Bake Chamber or at Nicholas Ortiz. And use the hashtag StrictlyBizGBCC. So it's StrictlyBizGBCC is the hashtag. So we'll be following Twitter. And if you have any questions, any comments, any concerns, um, then we can address those. And, and we can you know, interrupt Jamie and you know, ask her a question real quickly. <laughs> um, so with that, I think we're going to go ahead and break. And when we come back, we'll have Jamie with her presentation. So stick with us. This is Strictly Business. Thank you. <laughs> 